we played the first concert. Everything I thought went well. You know, audiences applaud every time I finish my little riff or something. We get on the plane a day or so later, and I'm sitting next to him, and I'm waiting for him to say something about the concert. You know, I'm like, okay, young man, that was good or whatever. Nothing. Nothing came. And I was like, hmm. So, next concert, we play. Everything went wild. People applauded and all that happened. And I think, okay, for sure, this time he's going to say something because I thought I did really good, really good. Nothing. And so it's like, I'm like really getting anxious here and I want to know what's going on. So I was like, uncle, it was a good concert today, wasn't it? <laughs> and I was like trying to approach the subject. And he said, yeah, it was okay. And that was it on the flight next day, and he's reading. He used to love to buy books and just read, so he's reading and I'm like sitting there. And then he realized that I'm a little anxious. So he put his book away. And he said, Sakya, yes. Do you remember from yesterday's concert anything that I played? Anything that I played, he said. And I thought for a moment and I just realized, no, actually I didn't remember. And why didn't I remember? Because I was just too caught up in what I was doing. I was tied into this audience right there and I was like, look what I can do. Yeah, I mean, there's this other guy next to me who's playing, but fine. But <laughs> this is me, and this is what I'm doing. I had no idea. I said, do you even remember if I looked at you on the stage? Mm. And I said, I couldn't answer that question, because I couldn't, I couldn't. So he said, look, we are supposed to be playing together, we are supposed to be having this conversation together. Shouldn't you be watching me so you could hear what I'm saying, look at me and get my signals, and so we can converse together and interact together in that manner, rather than just that way? There was a question, it wasn't like, you know, he was in any way, <laughs> really like wow so i used to sit straight looking at the audience when i played concerts in my very young age i did the instrumentalist sitting there looking at the audience from that day on i decided that i would sit at an angle like this so i'm looking at the instrumentalist that i'm playing with and just that little change also made me listen to him and then my reaction to him became different. And now there was an interaction going on. He did something, I did something, he did something, I did something, I responded, da, 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 da. and suddenly what my dad did with him made sense. Now I could take those that information and put it into play. Because now I was reacting to him the way my dad reacted, because he reacted to those little riffs he was putting out. Why? Because, you know, we only improvise 50%. So, so that's what was happening. And, and suddenly it made all sense. And, and, and that's what made me important to him. Because now I was, you know, available to, at his beck and call to do what he wanted done. Because I was watching him and I was listening to him. And that's what it is. So, I don't know if it, versatility means that you're playing multi-instrument or you're singing or you're painting and you're doing all that stuff. Because it is, I find difficult, you may be able to excel at one or two things but not so many different things. It, it is not possible. But versatility is to be able to do that one thing that you do but in a way where it engulfs everything that's happening in the world of music. And, and sits well with everything that's happening in the music and makes sense in any conversation that you have with anybody in the world of music. And that's versatility. And, and, and when you have that conversation, that you have the ability to listen. Uh, another example is in the, in the world.